Hello guys, welcome to The Pig Daily, episode number 76. Today we're talking about the therapy build. It's a Zerg vs Protoss all in, and it's called the therapy build because if you're out there as a Zerg player and you've been crying your eyes out and unable to beat Skytoss, unable to beat masses of Immortals and Archons, this is the build to help you feel better about yourself by giving you a really, really easy way to get some um, easy ladder points. Uh, on the other side, it's also something where if you want to give Protoss players enough rage and anger that uh, they're going to need some therapy, then this is the build to go to. So it's got a double meaning. It's kind of a disgusting one. Um, I do like to throw out these disgusting build order guide episodes once in a while. Excuse me. Oh, man, my coffee burps this morning. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, this one came all the way back from season one of Star League this year from Dark vs. Stats. Um, very classic build. I'm going to walk you guys through how to do it right now. So let's dive straight on into game and uh, let's see how it goes. So with this build, essentially you're doing a very fast roach zergling all in, often opening where it's very hard for your opponent to actually scout and confirm what's coming their way. And, um, and this simply makes it very difficult for your opponent in order to kind of deal with how everything's happening. So you want to start out with a 17 gas, 17 pool, and then an 18 hatch. And this is going to allow you to get a nice, fast zergling speed to make that happen. So right around 40 seconds, maybe a second or two before then, you can drop that 17 gas. I like to make sure it's nice and early, because like I said, such a big part of this build is making sure your opponent can't scout what you're up to. So 17 gas, 17 pool, I only built that pool once a play early. Whatevs. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. It's such a it's such an all-in build, and obviously with all-ins you do want to refine your opening, but uh, it never matters all that crazy much. So this guy can go down to my natural now. Go for that 18 hatch that I was talking about. Now, if your opponent does go and block your base, you can just go to your third, and that's that's actually completely fine. It really doesn't matter. Um, in fact, because your opponent, part of the way they can potentially be, you know, a little bit wary, like, oh god, is this guy all inning? Is scouting your third. And by taking your third, you actually make it harder for them to scout and verify that you're up to some cheeky business. So this is a really cool little adjustment you can, um, you can make. Um, is, hey, you blocked my base. Well, that's all right. This kind of works into my plan anyway. Now I'm pulling one guy off gas. Why am I pulling one guy off gas? Just because the probes there, that's like a little bit of mind game for me. I, I, you don't need to add in anything fancy like that. You can just keep mining gas if you want. Um, and, ooh, I am building an overlord a little bit early. Normally, we don't want to get that overlord straight away. Even though I've done this build a billion times, I still have slight variations in it. And your zerglings want to come out and you want to try and hunt that probe. Now, if he wasn't just chilling in my natural like that, then I would have uh, I would have been searching down here, down here, all over the place looking for that probe. Now you want to build two overlords because I already built one. You want to build two overlords at 22 or 23 supply. So usually 22 supply because you'd be supply blocked there. And these zerglings want to go out and try and kind of distract and be annoying. Your first queen walks down to the third. You do want to start another queen in your main base. And then as soon as that roach warren is finished, you want to start pumping out these roaches as quickly as possible. Now, <clears throat> there's two variations here, so I'm going to pause for one second. And I'm just going to explain something. So, all right, the idea is you're hitting with a very fast roach zergling. But I said you want to deny the scouting. Now, we've already denied the probe scout. However, you've got to remember here is he could just come across the map with an adept right now. It's around that three minute mark where adepts could be kind of getting to your side of the map. So, there's a choice you make here with the build. You either build an extra four Zerglings, so combined with your first two Zerglings, Zergling speed's gonna finish right around the three minute mark. You can just bam, surround the Adept, kill it. No way they can scout what's going on. However, that slows down your initial Roaches. So it slows down the push a little bit, but it gives you guaranteed denial of information. The other way you can do it, and what you'll often see at pro level, is players saying, well, you know I have Zergling speed at super high level, so you're not gonna send the Adept on the map past this point. So I know you're not even gonna be able to scout this because 90% of the time, you're not gonna wanna lose your Adept for free. So I'm not even gonna build any extra Zerglings. I'm gonna rely on you keeping your Adept at home. And this is gonna allow my Roaches to get across the map super fast. 
And that's what I'm going to be doing this time. But that's a choice you guys can make based on your own skill level, how you prefer to execute it. So you want to be building your first roaches out of the main base, but then you want to be building the last, so the first four roaches in the main, the last three from the third, or natural. Because that way, the ones who are closer will rally out faster. Now, if you do see Adepts leave, I think he cancelled those shades. But if, if you do see that, you want to just, oh, no, yeah. Then you can come in with your Zerglings and be annoying. And that's going to that's gonna pull home. Here's Adepts as well. Now behind this you're massing Zerglings, however because you get supply blocked on 44 because you only built two overlords, it's very important after you built those Roaches to add an extra overlord. So we see that overlord's popping now for me. And if you do get Zerglings in the base at all, they're really annoying. In this case he doesn't have a wall, he's walled off the top of his ramp, which means it's going to be near impossible for him to defend this. As much as I'd like to kill his main, just killing his natural is enough to put me in a really, really awesome spot. Unless he jumps out with DTs or something like that. And uh, I'm just going to run away for the moment and heal. Ooh, I forgot to build an extra overlord so I can't actually heal those roaches by turning them into ravages. But uh, because there's no wall, I can take my time here. Often I would, uh, you know, go in a little bit faster and so on. As it is, let's just focus on that pylon. But because he's not overcharging it... Let's go in a little bit faster. Now if they do go Stargate like this, it can get very difficult to actually finish the game. If they build that Void Ray very early like this. And this is the downside of not denying the information, is if they have a Void Ray, you're on a timer. But what you can do is you can deny their mining for such a long amount of time. And you can usually kill their Nexus as well. In this case, I'm already starting to drone up. I'm now infinitely ahead. And I can transition into whatever the hell I want. And yes, he's got Void Rays, but I've got way more drones. He's got like 15 probes. And I can just take a third base and laugh, laugh my way home. I can build a few more Zerglings to threaten counterattacks so he can't really move out to counterattack me properly. Build a few extra Queens. And that's the build. That's it. So, GG's. Thank you to Eon Blue there for letting me show that. So that's a filthy, disgusting build. You will get so many free wins with this. Keep in mind, if I build the six or eight Zerglings there, um, you know, if he doesn't see those roaches at that exact moment that he does, which, by the way, was a very suicidal adept timing. That's something where you very rarely see that. Then he's going to have maybe an Oracle out, which isn't nearly as good as the Void Ray at just constantly chewing through the army because it simply runs out of energy, even though it's good at killing Zerglings. Um, in that sort of situation, maybe you should focus down the Nexus rather than going for the main. Just kill the Nexus, kill the natural, and then be infinitely ahead that way. As it was, I went for the probes, did relatively equal damage. Either way, it's a really basic all-in attack. It's very simple. Um, a Scarecrow says, Pig, this is similar to Railgan's one gas roach all-in, except with no third base and faster roaches. Well, this is a thousand times faster than that. This is much more all-in. You're doing this with only 19 workers. So the build order, by the way, guys, is down in the description below. But now that I've shown you how to do the build and like it really is so simple to do. And if you want the exact build order notes, it's down there in the YouTube description. Super easy to do. I'm also going to show you guys how to defend it because I feel a little bit dirty and disgusting. So I want to cater to the Protoss players as well and say, OK, guys, if you struggle against this, this sort of build, and there's also other, wall, other builds that are similar, um, which the same sort of defenses will help you defend against. So let's show some replayers defending it. And really the most important thing is your wall off. So I guess we might as well actually show it on the exact same map. Let's show it on Sejong Station for now. Sejong Station, it's a map with a reasonable rush distance, like kind of in the middle. Um, but it's... Uh, there we go. Yeah, loading up that replay now. It's one of these maps where you get this like reasonable, uh, reasonably big wall. <clears throat> 
Um, so it seems like it'd be a lot of weak points. And the important thing is how you wall off as a Protoss player. And this is one of the most important things to be safe against Zerg. And honestly, especially if you're playing above, say, if you're in Platinum or above, I really think, you know, you're much better off expanding on the low ground wall always against Zerg, as long as you start memorizing your wall offs. Now, whenever you have one of these really wide ramps, this is one of the best ways to wall off where you have one pylon, and that pylon could even be back a space or so, you just make sure you can provide power to build three of these big structures, gate, core, and then a gate with a pylon on the other edge of the ramp, and there will be a one space gap there. And this is just such a solid wall, and it will really help defend against this. Also, I actually don't even do a particularly tight build this game, but if you also wanna play a very safe opening against all sorts of crazy all ins either a fast Stargate or a fast Twilight Council are always going to be pretty decent, but really any build that gets three gateways down at the correct timing is going to be the most important thing. So number one, have a solid wall. This wall here is fantastic. Number two, always make sure you go for three gateways by the three minutes 15 at latest three minutes 20, about that time. So here you see that I've dropped these two extra gateways on time. Also, drop a little bit of Chrono Boost on your Cyber Core and on your Gateway if you're up against an early gas pool. So let's go back to my vision in the early stages of this game and let's look at this from a Protoss player's perspective. So, as a Protoss player here, let's uh, adjust those hotkeys. As soon as you see this gas pool, do you make any adjustments? This probe's gonna come in here, it's gonna see, hey, okay, you've gone gas pool before hatch. Now, I do think blocking the hatchery is something which is very nice. Purposefully in this scenario, I didn't do it. By the way, um, big thanks to Macintac here, who I uh, showed this build to, and he, he was nice enough to do it to me about 20 times in a row just so I could uh, get a few nice replays to show you how to defend it. But uh, yeah, you want to kind of say, well, he could hit me with Zerglings earlier, and also Zergling speed, rather than going to be finishing at 3 minutes 30 like it does with a hatch gas pool, it could finish as early as three minutes, which is when my adepts need to be off the map. So what I like to do here is hide a probe usually so I can come in and you know get a little bit of scouting later on. Your adept's not gonna get an, a massive amount of scouting. Make sure you've got that solid wall. And my adept is actually very late this game. So some games, um, if you get your adept straight away, you can go across the map. And normally as you get to their side of the map, you can kind of walk in while shading backwards. So even as Zergling speed finishes, you can still be hanging around scouting and maybe checking their third base. But as soon as it hits three minutes, you've got to be getting back to your wall in. So here we see three minutes, 15, I'm back in the wall. You know, even that's maybe being slightly risky. You cannot afford to get your adept surrounded by any early speedlings. Also around three minutes or so, this probe, if you want, can go in, check for a third base and try to go into their natural and see if there's any drones. If you manage to make it to their natural without being spotted, just the lack of drones or seeing roaches popping out and walking out of their base, uh, popping out of these eggs is going to give you a big tell. But you don't even really need to see that coming at all. In terms of a solid build order as well, I mentioned the gateway timing. What's another really important thing? Well, because you're up against this gas pool and they can hit these faster all-in attacks and you don't have as much scouting, like I said, a little bit of chrono boost on your core and try to build units a bit more consistently. This game, my gateway is super nice and early. Isn't that beautiful? Well... It's probably better to just have a few more adepts out, delay the gateways by a few seconds, but either way is all right. Also, you need to have your mothership core start at the latest with your next 100 gas immediately after your tech structure. So what that means is with a normal Protoss build, you go for an adept, you go for warp gate, your next 100 gas is going to go for a tech structure. So we see here, Okay, 100 gas goes down on that. That's, that's a little bit late. That could be down 15 seconds early, but that's fine. The next 100 gas always needs to go into that Mothership Core if you want to play a very safe build, and this is going to make your life a lot easier. If you're a really high-level player, you can skip this. You can get away with it. You'll see pro gamers always delay this Mothership Core for minutes on end. But if you're someone who wants to play solid, you're not Neeb, get the Mothership Core right after the tech structure every game. Even if it like takes away some of your gas and slows down your Upgrade or your Void Ray or your Oracle, it's going to be worthwhile to make you a lot more solid especially when you're up against one of these gas pool openings. If they've gone hatch first, maybe you can delay that mothership core a little bit longer because their attacks are going to hit a little bit slower, a little bit less hard. Now, in terms of 
What's going on here? I was always playing these scenarios just like a standard game. I'm doing a three gate adept expand where at this moment, before I see what's happening, there's a structure to what I'm doing. And I just want to take three bases. That's all I want to do. So let's go onto my vision and we can put it on my camera and let's watch my response. So Mothership Core should always be out front watching for more units coming around this time. And I'm going to grab a probe and I'm going to go to my third base because I want to build a pylon and a nexus there. I immediately go, oh crap. Okay, there's roaches here. And I pull back and I already start walling in. Immediately, your wall in is the most important thing. Already, because I've built the gateways at the front, I've got a sort of reinforced wall here. Notice I'm adding another pylon there. In case this pylon goes down, I really can't lose power on any of these structures. And I did actually pop my overcharge a little bit early in order to zone him out, but that's okay. Just walling in as much as possible. Why not drop extra gateways? And you want to immediately be turning those gateways into warp gates and doing your first warp in no later than about 4 minutes 10. What I almost always see in this scenario is Protoss players panicking going and they number one don't wall off and they number two just forget to turn their gateways into warp gates and their warp in's 20-30 seconds late. And this happens to me sometimes as well. So one of the big differences you'll find between a player who holds this and a player who dies to it is usually going to be panic or calm reaction. If you react calmly it's actually not that hard to defend as we're going to see here. So he's coming in now. I already wasted one of my overcharges but because that mothership core built at that moment, I said, just around four minutes 20 as they'll be breaking through your wall, enough energy for another overcharge. And I've got a full warp in. So I've got five adepts. And once they're very deep is when you want to use that second overcharge. And you want to just keep warping in these adepts as soon as quickly as you can. If you have to pull probes, you can. And remember, you can lose, use a lot of probes uh, in order to fight this and you'll be fine. And really just getting these big, thick, disgusting walls is just so good for holding these attacks off. This here was a super clean hold. He was a bit slow with his Zergling reinforce, but we can see there the power of the wall and just how damn strong that is. So now I'm going to show you guys another game where you can't wall off quite as well behind it. Um, another, another map where it's very popular is Frozen Temple. But I'm going to show you guys the perfect safe wall on Frozen Temple, which will make your make it actually possible to hold this. If you don't use this wall, it's very, very hard. And I'm also going to show you guys just how all in this attack is from Zerg. I see players who have actually held this attack think they've lost the game because they think they lost, oh, I lost every probe in my natural, I'm way behind. Zerg's just going to build a billion drones. you got to remember with this sort of really fast attack where those roaches are hitting you so early at like 3 minutes 45, you've got to recognize that that is a very specific type of all-in. Once again, same scenario. Probe's moving out. It's about to drop a pylon and a third nexus. Mothership Core sees the roaches coming up. So this is the wall. So what you want to do <clears throat> in placing your wall on this map, a lot of people struggle to not block their nexus because your nexus is so close to your natural ramp. What I always do is I always look at the plate of unbuildable rocks as my marker. And I always say, build the pylon. So not directly below it, but then one space to the left. So it's Pylon is on the left of this line, the rocks are on the right, if that makes sense. And it goes the same for both sides. You can do it down here as well. Do that line there, pylon can go there next to the nexus. And this wall is so solid, it's very hard for your opponent to get through. The downside is you can't fit gateways in here to wall this off. If you can ever just wall off with gateways, it just makes it really hard for them to get through. And this is, a, this is gonna be one where I screw the pooch. This is one of these replays where I make mistakes and I panic. I go, oh, pressure, ah! So he baits out that first overcharge again. Ooh, notice my Mothership Core. Don't think it's going to have that extra energy quite as early this game. It might do. And I have to wall off with pylons here. But I actually already make one mistake. I think there's a hole there. Or maybe he snipes that pylon down. I think, I'm pretty sure Zerglings can get through that hole. I need another pylon there. Um, but my, my gateways, they're just chilling. They're not turning into warp gates. It's 4 minutes 15. I'm just, I haven't warped in. I'm, I'm getting a bit desperate. I'm warping in a single adept. I'm panicking here. Look at this. Yep, there's a hole down there. I didn't wall in with another pylon or a gateway down there. Oh no, my last overcharge went down. <clears throat> and a lot of players panic and freak out at this point. Um, and definitely I've screwed up and made mistakes. And you never want to end up in this situation. But you want to stay calm and keep fighting in these situations. Because whenever someone hits you with an attack which seems unrealistically fast, it seems ridiculous, it seems too powerful, it always means that they've committed a lot of economy to it. 
And as a result, if you stay calm, you can eventually defend it. Right now, this looks desperate. This looks horrible. But look at that worker count in the bottom. I'm still up seven probes. And remember, if I hold this, we're on equal nexus. I have glaives, uh, the glaives upgrade finished now. Um, what's the T for upgrades or something? I always forget the I think it's G. G, yeah, I got glaives. And the thing is, is reinforce is just zerglings. And against glaive adept, zerglings are useless. The big problem with this sort of attack from the zerg point of view is that they can't really reinforce with roaches. All they can do is rally zerglings in because roaches will just take too long to get over there. So those early roaches, once they go down, the attack is just held. If you've got any, any you know, three or four adepts with glaives together, they can beat a lot of zerglings. And uh, even if you focus down my nexus here, like, or tried to, I'm pretty sure I would have been able to barely hold that. So you've got to be patient, hang on, and you will find that you usually can make these holds happen no matter what. So those are the most important things um, from the Zerg side of things. It's a 17 gas, eight, uh, 17 pool, 18 hatch. You get your two queens out, you get your Zergling speed, you um, get a single pair of Zerglings or maybe six Zerglings to deny scouting if you don't mind denying the roaches a little bit and you want to make sure they don't see it. Uh, and as Zerg, you basically just get supply blocked on 22, put a Roach Warren down, build two Overlords, build seven Roaches, build mass Zerglings and you just go. It's, it's super YOLO, super easy to do. That's why it's the therapy build. No matter how tilted you are, you can execute this build. But as we see from the Protoss side of things there, if you guys struggle against this sort of stuff, there's a few key points. If you're fighting the gas and pool, number one, chrono boost your gateway and your warp gate at least just a little bit. Number two, make sure, you, make sure your, your gateways actually get down at the right time. Um, actually, another thing I forgot to point out there while I was going through the replay, if you're someone who's a bit greedy and you're like, I like to build my cyber core on 21 or 20. I like to build a few extra probes after my Nexus goes down. No, dude, you're playing against a gas pool. The Zerg's being a bit less economic. He's got a lot of aggressive options. Chill, put down your 19 cyber core. Do not delay your cyber core. That's greedy as all hell. Just put the cyber core down. Make sure your adept is on his way home by about 2 minutes 50, 2 minutes 55. Don't leave it any later or he will get surrounded by Zerglings and killed on the map. Build your mothership core immediately after your tech structure goes down at the latest. And um, always have that mothership core out front your wall around that three minute 30 mark, because that's normally the time with an efficient build where you're going to take a third. But even if you're just playing defensively and you're taking a slower third, that mothership core needs to be out there to spot this sort of attack. So you've got a few extra seconds to pull your adepts behind your wall, wall in there, get your warp gates morphed, warp in a round of adepts, keep warping in adepts, and keep warping in more and more adepts. A lot of people try and make stalkers here as well. Don't make stalkers. Once you kill the zerglings, the real damage of the attack is held. And adepts actually do okay against roaches as well. Whereas stalkers just don't do anything to zerglings. They're just not effective enough. Um, even though they're better against roaches, they're not better enough to make it worthwhile. Um, so let's answer a few questions from chat. Dykesword says... <clears throat> uh, okay, that's a kind of, kind of convoluted question, but let's do it. Let's do it. He says, Pig, I don't want to start a why not question, but what are your feelings on doing a burrow all in instead of this? Is this one stronger? I feel burrowed roaches are better against Stargate because the other one kind of loses to a Stargate for me. And this one, it might only be bad against very fast robos. And everyone always seems to open Twilight or Stargate. What are your thoughts? Well, burrow is a very fancy technical attack, Black Zord. It works very differently and that it's always going to be slower and it relies on your opponent not really having an answer to burrow and you being able to get continual value. The big problem with Burrow is if your opponent just, because it's slower and it, it takes time to do damage, if your opponent stays calm and just warps in enough concentration of units, even without detection, they will simply be able to overwhelm your units. So it is a little bit troublesome uh, making Burrow work. Personally, I have no experience doing the Burrow rushes against Burrow players, but if it works at your level, do it. Have fun with it. Enjoy it. As always, if something works for you, that's great. But this attack here, if you refine this, this is much faster, much harder. This is going to hit your opponents really, really hard. And it's really just going to destroy them. This is one of these builds where it's more about execute the build crisp. It's really not that hard to and just kill your opponent. So it's a very simple attack. A burrow rush is going to be much more micro intensive and technical. Drax says, if it's a roach all in, why adepts instead of stalkers? Okay, well, already answered that one. So that's pretty good. Um... Is that build just for two-player maps, says Shamala Phantom. Well, let's think about the four-player map in the pool at the moment. It is Frost. Um, Frost is a decent map on, like, horizontal spawns, really fast rush distance. Uh, cross map, it's going to suck. Vertical, it's okay. So Frost, you're kind of rolling the dice and saying, 
I really hope it's not cross map because it's going to take forever to get across there. I have done it on ladder um, when I needed a bit of therapy before and I have one cross map before. So that it, it can work, but it's always a bit of a gamble. Um, I don't think there's any other four player maps on ladder right now, but yeah, it's definitely one for your smaller maps and also your maps with those wide ramps. So you could do this on Gettysburg as well. This would be a good Gettysburg one because there's a very wide ramp. The reason you could do it on Frozen Temple is, like I said, there's a short rush distance and there's no ramp at that natural. Like there's no high ground. But if they do that wall off, it's still pretty solid because you got to go through that tiny little choke point to get between the gateway and the core. And it just takes too long to focus down the gate and the core. As the Roachling player, you want to dive in, break down the pylons, preferably depower their buildings. Uh, and that's like a big part of what can make it work. You know, when this build was first um, used by Dark, it was back in the old map pool. And you can really see why he used it. Um, shout out to Esports TV here. This is Star League Season 1. This is where the build came from. In this set, he uh, three zeroed stats, and he did this opening every game. 17 gas, 17 pool, and two out of the three games, he did this exact build order. And stats just couldn't deal with it. Now, this was a Larilac Crest, one of the shortest rush distances with not only a wide ramp, but you've also got a second, <laughs> a second ramp, which I think at this point they had blocked with rocks, but it, it was still disgusting. So basically, he just comes in here with this timing, like so crisp, and he just focuses down the pylons and says, yeah, you're stuck on one gate production, GG. And it's over. So you can see how um, these sort of attacks really do thrive if your opponent can't manage to get a proper wall off up. So it definitely does thrive if your opponent has to wall a wide area. All right, guys. So uh, thank you very much for hanging out. That's gonna be the end of today's daily. Um, for you guys who want the build order notes, it's below the YouTube video in the link down there. Um, and I will throw that up right away for you guys on Twitch chat as well, so you can all see it. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Don't forget to hug a watermelon, kick a walrus, and of course, punch a cactus to the moon. Catch you guys next time. Goodbye and good night.